It was worth the week wait. Let me start the... <laughs> Let me start the recordings back up. Okay, we're back, uh, freshened up and ready to go and find out the fate of the idiot man who looks like a mummy right now on There Will Be Dungeons. Bo, take it away. All right. Um, Hope, I have a question for you. Is, is Ye Hope a cuddler or is Hope a keep distance away from? Oh, that's a good question. It depends on how drunk she is. The drunker she is, the more cuddly she gets. Otherwise, mm. she keeps her distance. You had you had some drinks uh, last night, so okay. Yeah, just trying to set the scene. You open your eyes and uh, you see pink skin up and down, the, the <laughs> chest breathing. Okay. Che and you, you, see, you see you see you see chest hair, and you look okay. up and you see you see Celibus, You know, sleeping what appears to be very soundly. It's morning. The first rays of light start to shine into the room. You're, you're, you're cuddled close to Celibus. That's where you find yourself in the morning. Cool. Well, and I'll his... wake up and kind of startle and push away that I cuddled up close, and then start getting dressed for work. Okay. So you start, uh, you start getting dressed, um, and um, okay. So you've got your gear on. And Celibus, <laughs> are you doing so quietly, or are you doing so decently noise? quietly? Okay. Celibus is the damn jeweler. <laughs> yeah, damn right. <laughs> gotta, gotta get him. He's just kind of mumbling to himself as you. Self healing. But you, you, you still get a sense of contentness overall from his sleep. Good, Super good. Well, before I take off, then I'll kind of like shake his shoulder, but to let him know I'm leaving, just so he doesn't think I tried and ditched him or anything. His eyes, eyes open a bit. And then he grabs your wrist and he's like, you're not leaving so soon, are you? I've got work to do. I can't stay. I'm sorry. Don't, don't, don't go work at Owens. You're, you're better than that. I'll, I'll, what's he paying you? No, no, it's fine. I love cars. I really do. But I'm still in town for a while, all right? And I'll give him a little smile. All right. You come see me as soon as you can. All right. I will. Okay. And then he sort of goes back to his sleep. You walk out, because uh, his room is in in the back room. There's another back room where he has his sleeping quarters. So you walk through his office, and then you walk out to the Buxom Confederate, and you see Eric there, still, he's cleaning glasses. To bed late, and up early uh, kind of person he seems to be. And he just looks at you and gives you a polite nod. I'll give him a polite, po polite nod back. Mm -hmm. And then he says, uh, can we make you, can I make you some breakfast? Oh, um, I actually have to get going, but thank you very much. Um, he says, okay, suit yourself. And then he gets back to washing his glasses, cloth. Cool. Are you exiting the building? Yeah, on my way to the garage so with my tools. Push, op push open the saloon doors. And um, so you're in the center square of Slave Town. The sapphires across the street. And you see Spillman's supplies, and you see this guy in a little bowl hat starting to open up Spillman's. And um, uh, across the street to the right is a large building with bars on it, and it says Oil Beard Slavers and Sons, and uh, there's no activity from there. But the thing that catches your attention most is there's, um, there's a man, naked, face down, lying in front of the sapphire. And the only th the thing that looks familiar about this, this nakedness is that some of it's covered up in these cloth wraps. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was coming. Gosh dang it! Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. You you have this feeling it might be Nash for some reason. I'll look down the path. <laughs> you. Look down the path of the garage and look back at Nash. I'm back at the garage. I mean, he's I'm got no cape, no staff. He doesn't have anything on him, as far as you can tell. Looks like he's in bad shape. All right, I'll go over and. Poke and it's his the face body. down in the mud. Like where you see his face, you see these little bubbles come up in the mud where his breathing is happening, probably. I'll live, I'll push the body over so that it rolls onto its back and I can see the face. 
All right, so you flip him over. Unco- he's, this is um, Nash is unconscious. Face is covered in mud. He's just covered in mud and warts. And he goes, I don't trust you. <laughs> 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 and and he's just like splayed out there, like just baking in the uh, morning sun. Oh, I'll slap his face a little bit, Nash. Nash, wake up. Uh, uh, stupid. Nash, you all right. Do our piece of shit. Uh, uh, Nash, Nash, uh, wake up. Can I wake up, Bo? Do I remind Tube dead? Yeah, you can wake him up. All right. Uh, hope. Ah, I'll sh- start wiping the mud off your face. <laughs> where, 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 what is this? Why, why are you here? Where am I? I'm, I'm as confused as you are. What happened? I, th- I thought. You- Did the cards get really dangerous? Is that what happened? Where's, Do we need to stop you? Where's my stuff? I need my stuff. I, I don't know. You, you were face down in this mud puddle. I don't know where your stuff is. I was in the place and I was fighting a guy. He said he was the jeweler and. Next thing I knew, there was a monster behind me. I think he said his name was Punk or Lunk or maybe it was Drunk, uh, but... So, so so to note, um, just really quickly, your inventory is now completely empty. So I've got nothing. So your periaptive health is gone? Oh. Uh. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going into your character sheet. You might just want to push refresh. Your bedroll's gone, your blanket's gone, your dagger's gone. My staff's your quarter gone. staff is gone, and so is your water skin. You've got zero items. So I've got my wrappings, my tumors, and me. Um, yeah, I look at Hope. Uh, oh, any, do you have any gold too? That's gone as well. I did. Oh, oh shit! Had I had the most. Gold. I had the most <laughs> gold. You have zero gold now. I had like six hundred something gold because of the card game. Oh, this. You might have gotten robbed while you were face down. <laughs> yeah, do you think? Jeez, I am never stopping to look at a guy again ever in the time ever. <laughs> All right. Um, I look at Hope and say, I don't know, but I, I think I, I think they got everything, and I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, let's get you inside. All right. I'm sure the guys went back to the hotel. Come on, and I'll help pick you up and put your armor on my shoulders and walk you to the hotel. Ladle bangs. Okay. So you walk. You walk into. You walk. Oh, do you need to do anything? I'm there? just gonna say to her. I'm gonna say in her ear as we walk, and I'm kind of darting my eyes around. I'm gonna say, "This is really embarrassing." <laughs> it's all right, Nish. We don't have to tell them everything that happened. All right. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that guy took my wallet. All right, anyway. So, so that's all I you want to say. I'm just road, embarrassed. Uh, a short way to Laddle Bings. And yeah. You can see it's a saloon door kind of thing that you can push in. And you push in and you help. I guess you're, you're sort of helping Nash walk. Uh, he gets the benefit of leaning on you. And you walk in and you see, um, <clears throat> you see a few people over to the left in this dining area having breakfast. You don't recognize any of them, except for one. You see the magistrate sitting there in a table all by himself in the corner, very gently cutting his eggs and sand squid. Um, the rest of the folks in there, you don't know. There's two women, middle-aged, fancily dressed, sort of sitting there and gabbing away and blah, blah, blah. And then um, there's a, a woman with a red jacket and like two gun holsters and she's just sitting there just sort of eating, looking really hungover. Um, and you see this halfling sort of whizzing about through the tables and chairs, giving people their sand squid and eggs. Uh, yeah, and there's no one at the, the front desk currently. All right, are there any bells to ding? There's a bell actually, in fact, on the table, on the on the table of the front desk. Perfect, I'll walk over and ding <laughs> the bell. Okay, bing, 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 bing. It's got a weird sound to it, it wasn't a quick <laughs> picture expecting. <laughs> <laughs> um, one second. Um, okay, so um, then you see that the halfling looks up and goes, I'll be with you in a minute. And he just he throws down some you know, plates on, and then he rushes over and gets behind the desk and says, <clears throat> fixes his shirt. Um, Hello, uh, I'm SJ Laddlebing. Welcome to Laddlebings. I'm the proprietor. How can I help you today? 
Well, hello, SJ. I'm Hope, and this is Nash, and we were told by Stump that we had a room, a rooms here. Oh my, does, does he need to see a doctor? I'm not quite sure yet. I'm not exactly medically inclined. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't look very well. Um, oh, it was, do, you, do you need me to get the physician? I don't trust doctors. Not right now. We we can we just get uh, the room rooms? Okay. Well, you sure I can't? He doesn't look good. What are all He'll those? Okay. Uh, is, is he have a disease? Just I can't give have us. My customers. No, no. Getting... It's actually it's a really bad sunburn. It you know it, it comes and goes. Sunburn. Yeah. Oh you know how sunny it is out there. It's always beaten down. Mm, okay. Um. So you're you're hope that means you're with the big lizard man Voral. Yes, yes. Or is it Vorel? It's Vorel, I suppose. Um, okay, uh, well, he, he's already up there, I think, on the sixth floor. I gave him the key to the place, so if you have trouble getting in, just come back down and see me. Oh, thank you very much. Room 601. 601, got it! As I start and if you walking. come back down, I'll make you breakfast. <laughs> thank you! All right, so you guys make your way up to the sixth floor. It takes a long time, because uh, Nash is not very mobile. And that's six flights of stairs. Uh, you make your way all the way up, and you... Uh, Voral, can I ask you a quick question? Mm -hmm. Are you the type to close your door or leave it open? Oh, um, I, I guess I probably left it open. If that's yeah. the only <laughs> door on the floor, too. So, yeah, because cool. I assume they're coming by, and I don't know if it locks automatically. So you go up to the, the sixth floor, and you see the, the door to 601 just completely ajar. Cool. I'll walk in with Nash. Okay. Uh, Vora, where did you sleep last night? In the... I, I fell asleep on the couch, and I've kind of got one of the cushions, like, on my chest with one leg up over the edge and one leg down on the other end, just completely sprawled on this thing. Okay. And when did I fell you... asleep, Bok Bok was kind of, you know, sitting on the floor, his back against my chest. And at least that's where I left him. Okay. And he's still there. So you walk in and see this. You see Varel splayed on the couch, and you see a goblin... Bok Bok that you recognize also there. Great. They're, they're both sleeping soundly. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll walk on over to Varel and I'll see if I can wake him. Varel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Varel. Oh. oh, Hope. Oh, Bok Bok's back. <laughs> so I, had, so excited. I had the strangest dream. I, I dreamt there was a massive explosion and I was caught inside of it. I heard it out the window. I'll look at Nash. Yeah, it's listen. <laughs> it's a long story. I thought the lo I thought the goblin was dead. What's he doing here? Uh, he lived. He 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 jumped and he ran. That is the explanation I had received, and it sounds like a brave one, so I left him to it. How you doing, little guy? I say to him. He goes. He wakes up and goes. And he runs over and gives Nash a out the big window, hug. Bok, Bok. Out the window, Bok Bok. Wait, he hugs me? <laughs> no, he, he hugs Nash. Oh, and then I go, oh, oh okay. All right, easy there, dude. I got freaking, I got dumb oh, problems. Yeah. We'll set you down on a chair couch. Where would you like to be set down? Uh, anywhere, I'll take whatever. <laughs> All right, and the nearest then, couch. In, in a strange behavioral way, as you're moving him, Bok Bok kind of like, Shows his teeth and starts biting you on your hip. Me? Nash. Yeah, but not like he's not like he's trying to bite you. Like it's like how a cat might bite your finger or somewhere. He's like he's being playful. Just, yeah, he's just kind of <laughs> biting your thigh. <laughs> You're not sure how to take it, really. I just, that, that's what's happening. All right, I look at him a little quizzical. I got a grimace on because I'm hurting from the hug and I'm just hurting in general. I need to get off my feet and I say, oh, maybe later, boy. Not now. I'm glad to see you too, though. See, Nash has a little soft spot in his heart for the mon for the monkey boy, so it's a good thing. It's a good deal. Sometimes he expresses that, not often. Sometimes he's blowing shit up, but right now he's like, "Oh, it's kind of good to see the little guy," and that's the only emotion I'm showing. Okay, so you went to go lie down on on a bed, or uh, where, where were you? Where'd you put him down? Uh, Hope, sorry. The nearest couch. Okay, so there's a second couch because it's a big executive suite. So you do find another couch to put him down on, and then um, uh, as you put him down on the couch, Bok Bok pets your your head and goes fresh, fresh, <laughs> fresh. I'm not I'm not meat boy. Get away from me. 
<laughs> I think that's more of a notion of your livelihood. In fact, I do believe he dressed as you to move about the streets, Nash. I think you have an admirer. Really? All right, then. He's fine. Good boy, Bok Bok. Good boy. Now leave me alone. Crash. <laughs> okay, so you, you shoo him away. He goes back to... He goes back uh, to find um. Uh, he goes back to Varel and goes. And he's like, where? 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 Poo? Where? Poo? Out the window, box box. <laughs> <laughs> the window. Throw, and I run over and throw open the window. Okay. And and he looks at the window and he looks at you and he looks at the window and he looks at you. And I kind of give a squat position, like the butt out the window. Kind okay. Of so he he goes to sit up on the ledge and and then he sits there for a solid, you know, a good five seconds. Takes him getting. You don't hear anything, and then he gets off. And he seems okay. Mm. <laughs> In the window here, shit! <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is going to hell is that? What is going on? You just hear like yelling and. and I closed the window. Good boy, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we have an agreement with the man downstairs. Uh, by the way, Nash, if you're planning on leaking on that couch, I would also wrap yourself. Yeah, I'm fine. I'll lay on this side, and I roll over on the side that isn't all tumored up okay and like, as you roll over you see like giant mud stain because <laughs> <laughs> you know you didn't clean nash off he's still covered in mud yeah from... yeah i'm kind of a mess know. we don't have i mean there's no we don't have bathing options okay but john could throw a little oh he's not there yet uh there is a there's a, a steel tub um off to the side in the main room there isn't a shower room because but there is How's you it see get... a large steel tub for one. I, I assume Hope would know how to clean. How would Morel them... and, and Nash probably not. How would uh, we get water in there? We'd have to call it. We'd have to go tell the dude and have him bring it up. I'm gonna wait for John. I'm gonna wait for Stanley to bring prestidigitation. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. That's a good plan. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, it looks like Nash is still alive. Uh, Varel, could you please bring him water? Make sure he drinks. I have to go to my job. Is this what he always looks like under the robes, or is he injured? Uh, this, this, I'm not sure. A little from column A and column B, I say. <laughs> <laughs> you guys could take this opportunity to share your experiences with one another. Yeah. If you wanted to, I'm I'm out the door. I'm going. Okay. <laughs> I, will, I will stand. Come on later. My hands on my hips and give a med not like a medicine check, just as in a looking at him and looking at the wounds and seeing the story that happened on his body. I see the story of pain. I got yes. you. So thirteen on identifying what happened to him. Okay, so you examine Nash's body and you do notice that there's a, there's a big bruise mark on his head. This would be where the beer bottle hit him, as well as some bruising along the side. Um, there's also a swelling on the other side of his head where you imagine this was something very, it wouldn't have been metal because it probably would have pierced. So this is probably from being punched. Would be your best assessment that he's been, he's, he's had several things aimed and successfully nailed at his head of a non-weapon nature. Do not do I notice the two side or the sort of shoulder wounds from the Wolverine attack? Ah, yes you do. Sorry, I forgot I forgot about those. Um there are two cuts that are, you know, starting to scab over. They're covered in mud so they're hard to see, but they are there. My goodness, what matter of beast did you battle last night? Not entirely sure. Where'd you end up? Were you here all night? Yes, I was uh, pledged to be the key master, so I waited on the couch there for others to show, but no one did. No, not Stanley, not yourself, nor Hope, who I saw this morning. I still have not seen Stanley, though I have heard the breakfast awaits us downstairs. Mm, it's my own fault. I, got se I shouldn't have separated. I shouldn't have stayed. I ended up picking a fight, and it all went bad. Yeah, this whole town is bad and ready to pick a fight, I think. I just want my stuff back. Stuff, yes. Yes, that's why I carry no stuff. <laughs> well, la-dee-da for you. I got a, I got a staff with the, uh, that I need, uh, all my money. No. I doubled my money last night, Vorel. Uh, well, uh, Stanley, oh, oh, Stanley gave me, I have the, the coinage. I have coinage. We can buy you new stuff. 
How much money? How, oh, and I realize I can't think this hard. I need rest. I've only got I've got no points of life, so I need to sleep. So I say, I don't know, buddy. Maybe I just need to lay here and and I start yeah. sleeping off. For a long rest, he's gonna need at least three or four more hours. Can I have that? Because I need I don't have anything right now. I have yeah. no life yeah. points. I mean, unless Vorel wants to repeatedly wake you up, uh, you can just decide to sleep. <laughs> no, I will. Uh, I will. Thinking about what I've seen with this money, I have 175 gold pieces, but it's just a. I'll take out 20. That's what Stanley usually talks about. 20 gold pieces, and I stack them in front of Nash and Bok Bok <laughs> to breakfast. Yes. <laughs> In disguise. And, and, uh, in disguise. Oh, he goes to walk out the door and then he puts the disguise on so he kind of looks like a gray sort of old man now, really short. Um, uh, so add 20 gold to your inventory there, Scott. Okay. And you have a good sleep. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> All right. So um, so uh, ho let's, ho let's check in with you a, uh, a little bit here. So now you're making your way to Randall's. Mm -hmm. now, he did say sun up and it's been you're late yes so uh as you you make your way down the road uh, i'm past, running i'm i'm it's a jog yeah, it's like you're, hustling, jog. you're juggling past spillman's boom bottoms the sheriff's office and then you make it to owen's garage and the owen's in there and he's uh cleaning a fitting and guess, well look who decided to show up i'm so sorry about that i know i could tell you a billion stories about why i'm late but you probably won't care so where's where where do i start He's like, mm -hmm. well, fine, you're here. So uh, what we're going to do today is, you see this big rig here? Uh, it's we're, it's one of the Toyota host vehicles. Engine's kind of making this doo -doo 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 sound. I think something, we're going to give the engine an overhaul. So we're going to take it apart. And um, so do you know, you know how to do that? Yes, I do. All right, well. There are a bunch of tools here. Get your tools and let's get it open. We're going to overhaul it. We're going to take all the parts apart. We're going to clean all the parts. We're going to clean the inside of the engine. And then we're going to put it back together and replace any pieces that look worn out. And um, and that's that's today's big task. Sounds great. All right. And uh, did you need anything? Did you get any breakfast in you? Um, if there's a little bit of food, that'd be great. Uh, you know, I'll ask my wife to, to bring something along. Uh, just, one, just one second. I'll be right back. And so he goes to leave and and you spend the morning, let's say for now, starting to get to work on the engine. Can we make a vehicle repair roll, please? Sounds good. <laughs> a five. Okay. So we'll check in and see how things went in a little bit. Uh, Stanley. Yes. Uh, what time did you plan on getting up today? Are you sleeping in? The first rays of light start to shine in, but uh, last night was incredible. Well, thank you. You had a, you had a really nice time last night, and honestly, you, I would I would venture to guess your character doesn't really want the next day to start. So, are you sleeping in? Are you taking your time? I'd, Is there any rush to go? I anywhere? mean, Stanley does have it in his mind that there's stuff he needs to get done this day. He does know that he perhaps left all three of his friends uh, to their own devices. So he's not in a huge rush, but he'd be getting up, you know, in the morning. All right. Um, so there's breakfast downstairs if you want to. I mean, what? how do you want to conduct your morning? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get up. Talia is still there, I'm guessing. Yep, yeah, she's there. She's sleeping. Okay. Um, I'd wait until she was up. I'd kind of putter around the room for a little bit. I have a, a note that I'm going to write. So maybe I would take the time to write that out. Okay, very good. All right, then back to Varel. Varel and Buck Buck make their way down the main stairwell. You see, there are people in the lunchroom. It's busy. No, it wasn't your, like your own service like it was last night. And uh, SJ uh, Lattlebing says, "Oh, Mr. Morell, hello, hello, good morning." And you're, you're, you're. Um, I thought he was staying upstairs. Oh, we we can proceed back upstairs if you wish after we partake of the breakfast. Yes. Um. Okay. Uh, let me get you a table. And he goes in, and he sort of um 
finds this space and he pushes some of the tables away and makes you like this segregated space from everyone. Uh, and he's like, okay, come on over here. You can sit here. And the the chairs are um, the normal chairs uh, that are normally there. So I don't know if you have any seating arrangements you need to make to do, uh, with that. Uh, and we're around yeah. backwards and sit on down. Bok Bok takes his chair and so, so I mean, we kind of don't have a big variety for breakfast. I can make you sand squid and eggs. Does that sound good? Sure, that's fine. Thank you. And we can, I can. Do you like um, <clears throat> fried things? Fried. I'll make um, you a squid bacon. Normally, I would the sandwich yesterday. Uh, that kill. Is there more of that? I'm used to dinner, and then I eat in the morning. What's left? Oh, um, I have your leftovers, I think. I can, I can get that for you if you want that. That, that sounds acceptable. Why, why would that be odd? Okay, and wh what does your little little friend here, is, does, does he eat? What uh, does he eat? He, he eats the scraps. No, never mind. But... Okay, so I'll just bring you your scraps, and then he'll eat your scraps. Scrap chain, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so SJ, SJ disappears for a moment, and he comes back out with the two halves of the sandwich that you've been apart and what's left of it and on a plate. And he hands it to you. And, and would you like any um? Would you like any coffee? We have this thing called coffee here. Have you ever no. had coffee? No. We, they're it's very expensive, but they grow it in the salivating fields for the principal. I get to keep a little bit of it. Oh. I have a little deal with the oil beard. I get to keep a little bit. Would you like to try some? Yes, it's like a fruit juice. Yes, a warrior's drink. Um, it's not sweet. It tastes actually bitter, but um, it makes you uh, strong. It makes you energetic. Strong. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds magical. It makes your mind perhaps, strong. Oh, uh, perhaps I will pass then. I do not require drugs this morning. <laughs> okay, well, I'll get you... Um, do you want anything to drink? I just have ale if it's not coffee. Uh, what was the, uh, the the Englishman's tuffery? Or what was the one yesterday? Oh, oil beards, imperial English. I'll get you one of yes. those. Yes, thank okay. you. So he comes back out with your, your ale. Hey, let's well, see. While I wait for him, I'll look around the room. Yeah, so you see you see two women over there. They're sort of gabbing. They seem to be middle-aged. Like, blah, 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 and then you see um, the woman you bumped into last night is there with the wearing the same clothes, the red jacket, the, the, the shirts, the white shirts, the belt with the bullets in it, her hat. But she, her demeanor is very different, just very still and sickly. And um, and then uh, you see the magistrate who was the master of ceremonies for your match in the rusty cage. He's over there and he seems to be reading some papers. And very carefully with a knife and fork, because he doesn't have good natural claws, he's like a creature of weakness, is cutting his sand squid and eggs. And Whoa. I look away from that. And... Bok Bok, the people here are strange. So I like that one. She doesn't change her clothes like my companions. Uh, they wear the same things every night. I appreciate that. Good for identification. Keep that in mind, Bok Bok. <laughs> And then he reaches his hand over and he looks at the food like, can I have? Can I have? Yeah, and takes admire it. the mayonnaise. Yes. He, he tells him to admire the mayonnaise and he just takes the piece he's taking and goes and shoves the whole thing in. And it's gone in like a second. Yes. Asking for more pieces. Of course. All right. So he's eaten most of your food by, by this time. Just keeps shoving them in hole. He's like, <laughs> people are gonna request a spin-off show of these two. <laughs> yeah, just nothing but nothing just, with that. They're he's very great. quiet. He just he sort of his hand goes into his head and yes, we'll, we'll make a proper kill later today, Bok Bok. Uh, shall we check on Nash, perhaps then? <laughs> he said, "Fresh want sleep." <laughs> oh, yes. Well, then I guess we're to our own devices today, then. Bok, it seems. And Bok Bok says, ah, 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 and he says, let's kill a human. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> fresh one. Oh, a fresh. Bok Bok, Bok Bok, please. 
this is a, um, ooh, an anthill, yes. You know, ants, small, little, weak ants, yes? Eh, they bite eh. you, they bite you, ooh, hurts a little, just, just a little. Ever stuck your whole hand in an anthill? <laughs> Stepped in an anthill. Foot, foot straight <laughs> in an anthill. They swarm, and all those little tiny bites each hurt more and more as each ah, time ah, ah, He makes this kind of loud noise, and everyone eating breakfast sort of stops and looks for a second. And I'm like, correct, Bok Bok, correct. And if if they were to look like to the outside, because you guys are speaking in Goblin, it just looks like a giant lizard and this hooded thing going like in the corner. <laughs> it's getting very loud, but it's getting very loud now. Correct, Bok Bok, correct. They will swarm. No humans today. I know, I know. He says, please, please, please. One. Half one. They're, they're emotional. They'd all attack us. It would be a mess. But, but I, I assure you, there will be, there will be a slaughter before we're done here. We just have to wait for the humans to get done with their these, and I, I, I pull out one of the coins. These are very important to the humans, and we must bide our time for some reason. And I drop it on the table. Buck Buck picks it up and goes, <laughs> I've seen them do that, yes. They like doing that. And we, yes, they taste bad. Why taste them? <laughs> and just like, I, he's like, I hate humans. Let's kill them all. Let's kill them all. We wait. We bide our time. <laughs> right. you, like, you get the sense of Demeter from Bok Bok that, like, he's just... You know, if you, if you got to hang out with someone really cool all of a sudden, and you just totally try and be cool like them, and so he's kind of just nodding and being like, mm -hmm, okay, you know best. I do think you are onto something, Bok Bok. This whole town stinks of slavery and sin. They require some refreshing ideas. Perhaps there is a, a lore master or a old sage we could talk to and find some deeds that would sway this town in our favor. Hmm. Like, ah, 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 ah. And he says, I don't know, no sage. I wouldn't expect you to. Uh, Laddlebing, Laddlebing. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, uh, uh, Vor uh, Vorel, what can I do for you today? Is there a sage in town that would know of a, perhaps, monster that plagues your people, or a dungeon in need of evacuating? Mm -hmm. Well, the Black Mine is mostly owned by the Oilbeard Slavers and Sons, or no, Oilbeard son and Sons Slavers, company um they might have some i mean they definitely have places in the ground where things might need to be killed maybe ah yes underground creatures and infesting the mine that is a fine story for the people bok bok we will and i've been saying this all in goblin to bok bok we will we will show them a story of such we should we should regather our friends first though uh and now to english that'll be uh, uh, that'll be, thank you. I shall return back stairs and see to my friend. Okay. Um, uh, did you enjoy your breakfast? Your, your yesterday's dinner? It was the same as yesterday, but crunchier, and I enjoyed that. Okay, then. Well, if you need anything else, just let me know. All right. So, um, <laughs> so you go back up to the room. I guess some hours uh, pass. Uh, Nash wakes up. Uh, Stanley, your uh, lovely Talia is also... Uh, woken up at this point. Talia. Uh, 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 sorry, I'm just waking up. <laughs> 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 I forgot who I was for a second. <laughs> it was a great feeling. But I, I Bo just... waits for Talia to respond. Uh, Talia, I wanted to say again how wonderful last night was. <laughs> and it was... That, that's how you do it. <laughs> it was amazing waking up and still finding you here. Oh. <laughs> she just looks at you and she's... 
That's the side of your head. <laughs> she could have run. She could have run. Um, where, where would I? Where would I run to? Well, I, I'm afraid going back is not going to be the most pleasant experience. I wouldn't blame you for wanting to get out of here. Wait, going back? I thought you said you had a plan. I had a plan for last night. I don't have a plan for today. I'm going to do the best I can. <laughs> it's just her, her four, five fingers <laughs> too fast and just punches you right in the square in the chest and it doesn't do any hit points of damage. But it's, it's he's like, that's not funny. That that's not fucking funny. She shakes you. She's like, what are we gonna do? What are we doing today? We have to leave. You said you had a plan. What are we doing? I said I had a plan for last night. That was Did the last thing last I night? said to you. Did you bring me this hotel, and then have, have get what you want, and then we you're not gonna you're gonna send me back. You're gonna send me back there. She hits I'm you going again. to do everything I can to not have that be the case. I don't but... want to go back. And she starts hitting. She starts pounding on your chest with her fist, pushing you into the wall. You Hell said yeah. you'd help me. I'm going to do what I can. I'm not going to make you go back there, but I do think it's going to be far more difficult for both of us if you don't. She sits finally just sort of giving up on hitting you, sits on the bed and kind of stares out in front of her. Now, I'm going to leave the choice ultimately up to you. I'm not going to make you go back there. If you want to leave or hide out here until we have a good idea of what to do, I will face the repercussions for that. But my options on how I can help you become far more limited without you returning. She just looks quietly off. And as, as the timing almost being very perfect, you hear a... at the door. Who is it? Why, it's uh, your friend, Sel... It, it's your friend, Sullivan. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised I didn't find you in the room upstairs. Uh, that'll being told me you were in the room here. Uh, that's fine, but I'm um, wondering if we can have a talk. Sure thing. Give me a give me a minute, Mister Stump. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go over to Talia. I'm going to whisper very quietly. Be very selective with how you use this, and I'm gonna hand her the extra dagger that I carry. Okay, so she takes a dagger and conceals it in clothing. All right, I'm going to throw on some clothes real quick, go over, and crack open the door. Right, you crack open the door. Makes a lot of noise for the few inches it moves open. <laughs> yeah, this is a very and, heavy door. Yeah. And you see Celevis there standing. He puts his face into the crack and all gold teeth. You see behind him a few, at least a few other men within... Uh, eye line uh, within your eye line and um, you see that they're uh, they're actually Toyota host men so they, they're wearing like a, pieces of like car parts <laughs> as like armor but no clothes and just pants and they're oily and one of them's got goggles the other one's got like a biker helmet on it's just these Toyota host yahoos in the hallway behind him and he said well oh, there uh, good morning uh, you sunshine. certainly felt the need to bring a whole welcoming committee didn't you well, let's just say I don't know what got hold of me last night. I thought I live by a certain amount of principles. I kind of broke them. And that's on me, but I wanted to make sure things go my way. You understand, we're still friends. I just, you know, my property is very important to me. And, um, well, uh, you said you'd give, give it back this morning, so here I am. Of just course. making sure we we're... were uh... Uh, we're still friends. Of course, we were just in the middle of waking up and I was going to make my way over to, to pay your establishment a visit. Um, shall oh, we... No need. We'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll take Talia from here. All right. 
I don't know why I'm doing Lattle Bing's voice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lattle we'll take, Bing's off. We'll take Talia from here, all right? There was a matter I wanted to discuss with you, Mr. Stump. Let me actually, I'm being very rude. Do you mind coming on in? Okay, so you open up the door, and he, he sort of steps in with his toothy grin, and he looks at the bed kind of for too long because there's one bed in, in the room, and he can see it from where he's come in. And you see him doing mental math. And he's like, oh, all right, all right. Now, let's, uh, let's get right down to it, Mr. Stump. Mm -hmm. You are a businessman and an intelligent man. And I don't consider myself stupid by any means. A person doesn't become as successful as you are by just giving out gold to anybody who, who they come across and extending the level of courtesy that you did and expect nothing in return. So I would like to know how I did on my application, so to speak. Your application? What, do you, what does that mean? Well, you, you mean found your initial interest in us, knowing that we are great fighters. We successfully did what nobody else has done. We then proceeded to spend time with you, get free drinks, see your courtesy, and I even managed to convince you to uh, break your own business practices. What I'm saying, Mr. Stump, is I'm very clearly a person of skill, and you don't bring people of skill into your employee unless you have a desire for them to do something for you. <laughs> so he, he turns around and he shuts the door. He's like, "Excuse me a minute," and he shuts the door with his leaves his guys outside. And he says, um, actually, he opens it back up. You too, honey. Skedaddle. Outside. And Natalia gets up and walks outside. Celibus closes the door. And he says, I didn't need any more convincing that you guys were fairly able to get things done. In fact, I was talking to your friend, Hope. And I gave her the details of what I want done. And the conditions under which it'll be met. Now, these walls are paper thin here, and this isn't my place, so I'm not going to talk about it here. You should go talk to Hope and find out what it is that I have to offer in exchange for what I want. That sounds, uh, that sounds fine. Do you have any idea where I might find her this morning? Well, she uh, says she was working at the Owens Garage. So if you want to speak with her, I imagine you'd find her there. Very well. I'll uh, seek her out and then maybe come by and pay you a visit. All right. Well, if, that, if that's everything, I'm going to take uh, Talia. And we're going we're gonna to be on our way. I'm glad you had a, a nice evening last night. Thank you. gives you a toothy grin. And, he leaves. Shuts the door behind him. We're now alone. Whoa. Uh, all right. I think I would next go and head up to the suite we were given and see who's there. All right. You go up to the suite. The door is wide open. No one closes the door. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> you walk in and you find uh, Nash uh, starting to come to. Uh, I'm stacking gold that. coins on Nash. And Varel is stacking gold coins on Nash's uh, body. And you see a, a hooded, um, short hooded creature. Um, s s I don't know. What is Bok Bok doing? What does he do? He's just, he's just hanging out. He's, he's vigorously masturbating. No? All right. <laughs> That's what I pictured for some reason. Okay. He's vigorously <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> Bok Bok, other room. Other room. <laughs> Uh, great assistant DMing, Scott. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, no apologies necessary. Um, yeah, <laughs> you walk in on this. Stanley! <laughs> it is good to see you. Did you know they make buildings that have their own floor? And and this this portal way, the stairs are very good at keeping others out. I didn't know seclusion could be had in such a populated area. I have a few questions. Just... <laughs> Based on the temperature of the room I'm I'm seeing thus far, Varel, 
My first question is, why is Nash naked? Well, and why are you stacking gold coins on him? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Nash got his uh, butt kicked last night, to use one of your uh, human ideas. These, <laughs> uh, some sort of large creature descended upon him, beat his ass, if you will, and left him in the street. He has nothing. So when he awoke, I thought the jangle of coins might uh, uh, be re refreshing to him, and he would see all the riches <laughs> at his feet that he would have to clothe himself <laughs> once again. Mm. Well, that's a very good idea, Varel, but you got to be careful. When, they, when he stands up, they're going to fall, and I'm going to go over and start gathering the coins off of them, and I'm going to pocket as many as I can <laughs> while doing it. <laughs> right, I will say that uh, I gave him so the 20 that were sitting on the table I've used an additional 50 in the stacking here oh should that 20 not be in my inventory bow well no, no, no I guess not <laughs> it's right. disappearing I'm taking it out so wait how much gold was that was that additional 70 uh, so there are, there's 70 gold that's been uh, 20 is on the table and then 50 has been stacked on Nash in various places all right, so I would say overall, I would pocket about 50 of that gold as I'm pretending to stack it up on the table away from him. So the pile's got a bit smaller. Right, thank, thank you for your help. Uh, those go on his head, though. They won't jangle when he wakes, and, and the joyous scream he will have, seeing so many coins to clothe himself with. I uh, bet he's going to be fine. You know, Varel, you should you should hold on to that money. Nash clearly cannot be responsible enough to maintain it. Um, also, I'm going to look at him and press the digitation, the couch that he's sleeping on, because it's in a sorry state. <laughs> yeah, very dirty. A lot of oil. Yeah. It's going to take a few casts. All right. Just It'll go take about 10 minutes solid push of in, casts. Go. Push in. <laughs> Um, what did you discover last night? You never came. Well, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley, king of the jokes. Oh, man. Um, there you go. That's to celebrate it. Thank you. Uh, well, do you remember Talia from from Dust Hill? We, I met her the same day I met you, but I'm, I don't know if you all interacted much with her. Anyway, she's the mother of uh, Bruce Bane, who we left back in Dust Hill, and uh, she's here. She's being forced to work for Mr. Stump, and I'm doing what I can to try and get her out of his employee, and it's uh, so far not going well. How has the rest of the slaves fared into this plan? Well, we've got an idea of how much gold it costs roughly to buy one of them and it is a it is an amount that we have no hope of making anytime soon however i did run into mr stump this morning and he said he made a job offer to hope so i was uh i was hoping we could find her to speak to do you have any idea where she is did she oh i do, i know where she is she went off to work he told me as much. Yeah, he deposited Nash here on the couch and left without eating, too. So it must have been quite the appointment. Yeah, I think ideally we need to get everybody together uh, as quickly as possible and find out what we can do. I also have another little errand I need to run this morning. I'm running out of weaponry, and I have to pick one up. Well, Nash wants to shop. You want to shop? We go shopping until Hope arrives. That sounds that sounds like a good plan. Nash, wake up. Ugh. I'm gonna kick the couch. <laughs> uh, I hate I hate to uh, purple people. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What is it? Damn it! Oh, it's Stanley. Hey, uh, sorry. Thanks for cleaning the couch, though. You must have done this. No one else has the power to clean his couch. Now, this will be the first time we've seen Nash, now that the mud's gone, in his burnt and... Naked glory? glory? You've, got, you've got the full view of just him as a his corporeal form. And so half of his body is covered in warts and tumors. 
like just almost like a second skin. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of them are bleeding, or there's little yellow pus coming out of oh, them in some geez. spots. <laughs> yeah. Nash, what on earth did you do last night? <clears throat> I've been through this with hope, but I'll tell you the short of it. I was walking down the street after I won all that gold in the in the game at the saloon. And there was this guy, some jackass, staring at me from a window. I don't know if you know me very well, but I don't take kindly to such behavior. And I went and called him out. And we got in a fight, a fair fight. Until this huge, I don't know what, showed up behind me and kicked my A. And that's the last thing I remember. Then there was hope and she helped me get home. She's a, I'm going she's a to do an insight check to see if Stanley believes a word of what <laughs> he just said. <laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> um, so uh, you read on him is that knowing Nash uh, with a little bit of the extra help is that there's truth intermingled with minimizing of his own culpability in certain parts of the story. Well, Nash, that seems like a uh seems like what you believed happened uh am i to take it you were completely robbed then you have nothing you know as much as i do i woke up with nothing there's nothing there it was gone i don't have my gold i won a lot last night by the way it was really gonna help us this is why he was supposed to wake up with something well here you can have uh you can have some of mine and there's what 20 or no there's about 40 gold on the counter now yeah just the 20 you pocketed the other 50 oh okay so yeah there's about 20 so i'm gonna take the 20 and i'm gonna count out 10 coins to nash oh my gosh <laughs> I'm getting so jacked on this deal um uh, <clears throat> great the gold will help but they took everything they've got my staff they've got my dagger they have my all my stuff all my stuff's gone i don't even have my cloak well I'd say right now, looking at you, the priority is covering up your business because it is awful. Well, it, like I told you before, there's not much to be... I mean, listen, I'm... La-dee-da, <laughs> you guys all got to go out and use your perfectly functional uh, d d goodies and fruits, and I had to go play <laughs> poker. Uh, that's great and everything, but I don't have mine anymore, so... So look upon it, and I spread my legs, and I say, "Just look at this!" <laughs> and they just see this, like they see this rumpled stump of nothing. It's time for the Wait, press the digitation you... cloud to make its triumphant return. Did you take off your loincloth? Oh, I guess I don't know. You guys kept saying you, I was naked. Are you just patting it, like showing there's no bump there? You guys keep saying I'm naked, so I don't know. Well, I'm... you're naked, but not fully naked. Oh. Like you have... I, I always picture you in my mind as wearing, you have a loincloth and mm -hmm. then some bandages. I do. I'm, I'm got, yeah. And normally they try to cover up most of my left side, my arms, my legs and everything. But let's just say, yeah. let's say we've got kind of a tattered, a little bit of torso coverage, a little bit of crotch and butt coverage, yeah. but not but much. Some of those bandages are now like red and dried from injury. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not like you change your bandages, which is... What no. you're supposed to do with bandages. No, <laughs> I have not. All I'm saying, Nash, <laughs> is you are a crusty individual and you are going to get thrown out of this town if you don't cover up at least a little bit. Well, I, it's great. I need to go get clothes. This is, I wasn't, I didn't rob myself. <laughs> no, but you do invite trouble everywhere you go, Nash. You're like a child. Most, listen. Real friends would come and help me avenge what happened last night. I just gave you ten gold. Go avenge your nudity. <laughs> <laughs> Wandering this town is some guy with wolverine claws and some huge wrestler type. And they're getting away with this. And I don't think that should stand. I don't know what that means, but wrap a sheet around yourself and go buy real clothes. All right, I'm going. All right, so I'm going to... is fascinating. It has claws. It is huge. Uh, ben, Nash, Nash, I just remembered. They have drugs downstairs. Would you like some? Drugs? Wait, what? Yes. What kind of drugs? Yes. Explain more. Uh, what is this? They're grown in a distant land, but Ladlebin gets to keep some. Uh, is it for pain? What is it? What does it do? Yeah. 
mental and physical rejuvenation. All right, I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> Nash has a uh, tendency to, to go for the, uh, you know, for the self-medication. He's into it. That's why you I got all so... do that. I'm going to go pick up my sword, and then I'm going to go bother Hope at work because, honestly, <laughs> we're dealing with more money than her salary is going to cut, I think. So you can I all do that together? Bo if you just wanted to stay in the group. I'd yeah, rather yeah. not be seen with, with... them. Honestly, <laughs> they can they can certainly come with me. Is it we possible must... that I can look around and see like draperies or anything that I could fashion a new hood and and stuff out of? Uh, well, there's 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 blankets. So I mean, like you could take a blanket and probably put a hole in it. Oh, here's what we're gonna do. Okay. I'm going to take a blanket. I'm going to cut a hole in a minute. Basically, I'm going to make me a moo, -moo right? I'm going to put that over the top. So it's just a sheet with a hole and a head poking out of it. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And that's gonna All get. Right. That's it until we get. Until I can you find somebody. You don't better. have any knives, though. You're gonna have to get somebody to help you do the, the hole. Varel, give me one of your fingernails and cut this hole for me. All right, but Lado Bing said we shouldn't mess with the grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Lado Bing's an idiot. Just cut it. We'll pay him back. Oh, we have enough gold to pay him back, especially if I get oh, my revenge. Oh, we do. Okay, good. Yeah, he'll be all right. So he cuts it. I put on the moo moo. I'm now somewhat okay, clothed. So any fan artist out there now, pay attention. It's no longer on. It's, a, it's a blanket with a hole cut out. Because I don't have. I mean, I don't have one. I need to make anything better for now. So, so yeah, yeah. It's fine. this will do. This will do. Let people know. I need. Um, uh, right, so. And I wrapped. I by the way, that hole that he made, I pull it into strips, and I use that to wrap my feet in a in a sort of makeshift <laughs> foot wrap sort of thing. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> left over material to make sure. Oh, oh, the, the hole I cut out with my finger. He used that as a okay. Yeah, yeah I tore it. Out. I tore it in half and then made sort of footies out of it so that I can. <laughs> <laughs> so I can Perfect. leave. I don't want to break the group up. I don't want people waiting around for me. So I'm ready to roll. In my... yeah, there's nothing about what you guys are doing that you have to do alone unless Stanley just really wants to. It's. It... I'm not sure if it's Stanley or John that wants to stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably both. Yeah, probably a little both. Uh, anyway, so you, you guys make your way downstairs. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it was just like he's like chewing go something, and then you guys make your way down the stairs, and then he sees Nash, who's first to come down. And he just his gum kind of falls out of his mouth, <laughs> as he, he just kind of, he's like, um, this okay. man requires drugs. Uh, <laughs> drugs? Yes. I don't, I don't have any drugs. The rejuvenating beans you spoke so highly of. Oh, the coffee. Um. <laughs> okay, I've got a fresh pot on. Uh, Nash, how much um, sand squid do you like in your coffee? I, I never heard of sand squid. And co I've heard of coffee. Is this the drugs you were talking about, Varel? Yes, he spoke very highly of that. Uh, freaking don't ask a, a lizard about what kind of drugs you got. He doesn't know what coffee is. Coffee's normal, but I'm not taking any. I want it black. No squid guts. Nothing. I, can, I got freshly squeezed sand squid that we can put in the coffee to make it a little lighter. Oh, I thought this was going to be the hard stuff. Just freaking coffee. This is great. All right, give me... Uh, give me a cup of the uh, fine put a little sand squid in there i don't care okay so uh, do you want a medium cup or a large cup sir large what do i look like and wh what about for you uh, mr billings do you want a coffee yes i'd love one and how much sand squid would you like in it i'd say just a moderate amount okay and uh, varel do you want to finally try some oh yes and and with all the sand squid okay so <laughs> All the sands. Okay, um, perfect. So he makes, he gets out, uh, he goes to the kitchen, and he, 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 this part of the kitchen is actually visible. So you can see him pouring coffee into a cup, and he puts a medium cup in. And then he reaches behind the counter and he takes the sand squid, which is like, you know, it's got these tentacles, it's dead. Um, and it's uh, got this sort of bulbous head on it. And he takes it and he starts squeezing it. And then sort of this white, creamy juice fills up into the coffee cup. And then he fills it a, a lot into a large one. And then he gives the coffees to Stanley and Nash. And then I'm going to get you an extra special one. He takes a beer stein and he fills it up about halfway with sand squid and then halfway with coffee and gives it to you. To Varel? Um, to Varel, yes. yeah. 
<laughs> this is kingly treatment, Lionel Bing. I have enjoyed my stay here immensely. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. You should tell all of your friends. Do you have other? Do you know other lizard people? I know a snake in the desert. I could tell him. <laughs> <laughs> a, like a snake person? I've never a, seen one of those. Twenty-five foot, brave snake. Oh, you mean an actual snake? Yes. We don't really offer rooms to snakes here. Oh, Pharrell, I'm sorry. I thought maybe you had like uh, some other people you knew who could stay here. Oh, they're already staying, the people I know. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, enjoy your coffee. Don't drink it too fast. It's hot. Oh, where could we find uh, Nash? What was it you needed? Everything. Everything. We need everything. <laughs> where can we shop for everything? <laughs> Um, well, the general store is what we think of as everything, but oh. it doesn't have everything. Right across the street. Uh, perfect. Nash, let's go shopping. We'll start oh. there. That's fine. Thanks, uh, a, thanks a lot, you Well, can I ask you, I heard from Mr. Laddlebing here that there was a goblin with you? Oh, we left him in the other room. <laughs> he was enjoying himself. <laughs> I must go fetch box box. <laughs> <laughs> and I run back up the stairs. <laughs> you, back up the stairs. You, you don't you don't see him anywhere, but you, you hear <laughs> Bok Bok, wrap up and meet me downstairs. <laughs> you, hear the, you hear a bunch of bo boxes fall over or something as, as soon as you start speaking, realizing his privacy has been broken. Um, and, uh, yeah, so eventually he makes his way back down and joins you guys. Great. Great. By, by the way, how many hit points did I gain back with that rest? Did I go full? Uh, you're, so when you have a long rest, which everyone has had, I believe. Did we call uh, that one a long? It was only four hours or it's something. A, it's a long rest. Uh, we'll break it up into two parts, okay. but you got your extra sleep and you're okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you refresh your spell slots, you refresh your hit points, yeah. and half of your hit dice. Oh, Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So you guys have, have your coffee. You enjoy it. You know, take 10 minutes in kind of silence. It doesn't seem like you guys are speaking too much. Um, yeah. And as the coffee's, you drink yours super quickly, Morel. Like, you don't oh. have the sense of like it's coffee and I sip it. You're just like, oh, good, good, good. you're like, you're going to you, you pound this, this, yeah. this, this special bitter but delicious juice. It's a, it, it, what's incredible about this, too, Morel, is that it isn't meat. And yet somehow tastes delicious. Hmm. And you also feel inspired. Ooh. Oh wow. Inspiration. So give yourself inspiration. I will. Now is how how do we use that? It's just whenever you choose, uh, and it lasts forever, but you'll only have a max of one. Okay. You can gain advantage. You give yourself advantage on something. Sweet. Did I lose mine when I lost all my hit points? I had one still. No, you still have it. You've had it ever since episode one. Yeah, yeah. I'm still hanging on to that thing. <laughs> <clears throat> not not that it would have mattered. Night, you know what? But, would I, you know. No, this is what I this is what I believe about last night. I believe that no matter what was going to happen with that guy with the claws, and I just about had him. You were going to bring some other fat jerk in to fight me, and and no matter what, I was going down and ending up on a couch. So I to went. Be clear. Mm, I'm to be hold. clear, he didn't come out of nowhere. This Donk is a fully planned character as part of the Sapphire. You didn't you you didn't say I examined to make sure there isn't anyone else around. I should have done that. There was that. no one else in the Sapphire, which you checked. Well, I was drunk so. and enraged and <laughs> It's true. But yeah. it was the Dungeon Master's fault, you're right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bok Bok, it is surprising and good to see you again. Your bok -bok. <laughs> what did you he say, Vorel? I translate. Uh, he says, um, "says uh, uh, you look fresh today." <laughs> he says, "Thank you." you. Fresh. I, I cast press the digitation on him. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> he starts. <laughs> he starts brushing himself. Doesn't look like he enjoyed that very much. No, oh, I know he hates it, so there you go. The joy of being clean is becoming dirty once again in combat. Mm. <laughs> the Lizard King is wise as he is! Handsome! <laughs> 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 All 
All right. Or shall we? To the, to the shopping, now that we have enjoyed our... Yes, I, yes I've got to get out of this. i got to get out of this freaking blanket. Interesting, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, we got to go. Right, as, you, as you go to leave, um, Varel, the, the woman in the red coat, who's just sitting there, having finished breakfast, and is just sort of hanging out there, staring off, lamenting. Uh, you catch her staring at you. And she gives you a nod again. Hmm. As you walk Stand, by. Standing. Yes. What do I do when someone nods at me? Uh, just nod back at them. Oh, hmm. I'll turn back around and nod. Hmm. Is it good? Perfect. Well are, done. Are we friends? <laughs> you know, it, it would be acceptable for you to now speak at some point if you uh, should find yourselves in proximity to one another. Oh, oh. Well, excellent. All right. So as you have this conversation, you exit the building. It's now midday-ish. Um, the sun is is just intense at this point. Everyone's sweaty. It is still the wasteland, even though you're in this town, and you can really feel the heat today. It's also very muggy, very wet. Nash, in particular, is excessively sweaty and wet. Um, and and so you make your way down the road over to the general store, which is across the street and to the left a bit. And um, yeah, and you push your way in. And you see it's it's shelves mainly. It's got cans everywhere, and um, you see some you know confectionery on the counter. And there's a who runs this place? You see a young woman, human. I believe that's right. Sorry, one sec. Uh... I don't know why there was a dinosaur. I apologize. That shouldn't have been there. <laughs> yeah, you see a young human woman reading a book sitting behind the counter. She doesn't pay you any. Even though the, the door, the bell rings as the door opens, she doesn't put her head up to look at you. All right, Nash. Take your time. Ten gold is your limit. Make yourself presentable. I have more if he desires. <laughs> He'll be fine at ten gold. Oh, I've. We'll see. All right, I go in. I say, excuse me. Um, it's not uh, stopping to look up from a book. Says, uh, what do you want? A few things. I'd like to start with some clothes. Do you have clothes for a guy my height and weight? She looks up from her book at you and goes, "Oh, <laughs> are, are you?" You okay there, mister? Keep it together. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. None of this is contagious. I just need to get some cold. I need some real clothes. As you can see, this is literally a blanket with a hole in it. I mean, uh, okay. Uh, well, in the back, you'll find dungarees and, sh and you know, shirts. It's ten Anything gold. else I can do for you? I have 10 gold. <laughs> what will 10 gold get me in here? Can I get a full ensemble? Like the full, you know, a nice shirt, maybe some pants. Shoes. I mean, just just go back there, look at the clothes. Come bring it, whatever you want. All right. If uh, the sales are final and you can't try them on, so I hope you know what size you are. <laughs> All right. Um. Thank you. And I'm gonna go look. Actually, I'm gonna okay. yell hope. Oh no, hope's not with us, is she? She's at work. <laughs> you still yelled hope. Uh, and everyone just kind of took a moment. And you guys yes, are like, we all hope you find something, Nash. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, she could help me with this. I need fashion help, but fine, I'll do it on my own. All right, so I. Uh... Your previous fashion sense is throwing a robe <laughs> over your ugly self. <laughs> do that again. Good. Find shoulder pads, make yourself wider, and perhaps a hat with a ridge on it. I'm upgrading, damn it. All right, so I go in so there. If you head to the back, and there's like um, there's a just a sort of pile of clothes. One yeah. has pants, the other one has shirts. This doesn't take like a clothing store. It's yeah. just they have. You think of it almost like a um, Salvation Army kind of style place, where it's just there's a pile of clothes in there, and they are what they are. And one says, you know, three GP each for the pants, and then three gold pieces each for the shirts. Yeah, uh, if I, there's I, a I... box of boots in it too. All right. Uh, do I? I want to glance around and see if I can see anything that that looks like sort of a hooded hooded robe. Um, Cowl you do style. see uh, sort of towards the back that there's some some more jackety type affairs mm -hmm. uh, hanging up, and and you do find like um, this black uh, what looks like a it's a cape. 
Okay. It doesn't have a hood on it, but it's it's it goes over the shoulders and it's it's kind of a cape. Ugh. Are there hats hats around? Like regular hats? Um yeah, on a top shelf up above you see an assortment of like top hats and bowl hats. <laughs> I can't wear a bowl like, hat. A few, or a few, hat. A few, <laughs> yeah, there's a motorcycle helmet up there too. There's a there's a box full of various goggles in there. How much is the helmet? <laughs> the, bike, the, bike, the bike helmet yeah bike helmets uh five gold pieces so three three and five i'm gonna be short i kind of want the helmet i can count that as some armor right mm-hmm. i mean it'll look ridiculous i realize that it's gonna not look really st- not really okay maybe i don't care really. all right uh, you probably could get <clears> some padded uh, you, uh, through the assortment, you could get some padded like clothing that would serve as as armor. It's not okay. Um, it's not your cape, though. All right, so there's nothing here that's like my normal hood cape combo. So until I get that back, that's just assuming I get my revenge and I get it back. Hint, hint. Um, I'll take. I'm gonna grab a pair of the boots. I'm gonna grab. Okay. Uh, a pair of pants that I, I size them up that they'll fit me. I get a shirt that'll fit me. And yeah, I get there's that. Like a, there's like a tank top and then there's like these, just these sort of uh, button up shirts that are in there, like workman's shirts. I'm going to get a workman shirt. Okay. And, and Short sleeve long pants, sleeve. long sleeves. And okay. Co- cover up my <laughs> shit. And then I'm going to buy, uh, so I got the boots that, and I want that cape, that black cape. And I'm going to, I don't have the money for it. I'm about, I think at this point I'm what four bucks shy or something. Uh, so pants three, shirt three, boots five. Um, so, so I'm already over a dollar on that. So I need uh, five, six it's bucks, eleven, and then the cape was an extra four bucks. So you need fifteen gold. Also. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna have all this stuff up in my arms and I'm gonna go Stanley. What? <laughs> I need more money. <laughs> I'm going to go up to the counter. What all are you getting? I'm only... It's the necessities. These are boots. <laughs> see? I got this shirt deal and then these dirty pants and this cape. That's it. That's all I'm getting. And how much are they charging you for this? The... It's, what'd you say, Bo? 16 bucks? What is it? 15 oh. gold pieces. 15. 15. You gave me 10. I need five. Ma'am. Look at this man. He's a walking health risk. Are you really going to make him continue to walk around, pustules out? What if we gave you 10 for the lot of this? Ooh, we're going to negotiate, are we? So the, 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 the young woman reading the book says, yeah, that's true. That's true? It's a, <laughs> it's a weird way to answer that. She doesn't, she doesn't look up from her book and just nods and says, yeah, it's true. I'm, I'm gonna sorry, say, Nash. I tried as best as I could. She just isn't having it. Stanley, I bet we can just leave. She won't even. Look, she won't even look up. Let's just take this shit and go. Well, what part of it? Uh, what's the cost on everything again? Fifteen. You just off by five gold. What costs five gold? Uh, the cape. The cape. Yeah. <laughs> You really needed that cape, huh? <laughs> he looks he looks like a like a miner, like someone who's gonna go work in the mine, but with a cape on. But with an evil black cape. I mean look, it's a little mismatched right now. Eventually I'll get geared it'll look good together again. But I need you know He looks better than he has before. He says that as you say that you're like, This is better. Well am I wearing I'm not wearing it. What, I guess I could we're wear it. Putting the cape back, you buy this and I'm going to take the cape and I'm going to pretend to return it. Oh my God, to... John, you're so cruel. He, 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 All right, fine. It's part I'm... of his character's identity. I'm gonna <laughs> no. see, I'm, wait, you didn't let me finish. I'm going to try to hide it and try to steal it. Oh my gosh. So we got a deception deal going. What? Okay. Uh, She's roll. reading a book. She won't even look up from it. How how are you stealing it exactly? Like, what's the plan here? I'm gonna tuck it under my arm, which has a cape over it. Okay. Now uh, roll a sleight of hand check, please. Capeception. <laughs> yeah. There there are many capes. Capeception was good in um, the Titanic. Oh yeah, I love Capeception. She's great. Great horror movie, Capeception. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is a nineteen. Okay, so you bundle up the cape as as small as you can and stick it under your arm into your cape yeah, there's no 
Uh, the woman at the counter just seems to still be reading, chewing a probably sand squid gum. And I go, hey! Nash, you have 10 gold. Just pay for this. You're going to have to do without the cake. All right, I go, hey, and I go... <laughs> 10 gold down on the table. There, I'm out. Goodbye. You're the worst she, she service. Looks up and she's like, Ugh. um, 10 gold? Uh, uh, she looks... So you got like a shirt and a pants and boots? That's it. Is that right? Yeah. It's 11 gold, I think. Bullshit. It yeah. says the thing right here. There's a price tag. There's price tags on there scrawled in. Uh... Three gold for the shirt and it's, and it's like three gold for the pants and it's um, five for the for the boots. That's 11. What if I, <sighs> what if I give you 10 and I don't melt your face with a firebolt <laughs> how about no. that uh, roll it into <laughs> no. okay hold on intimidation you said <laughs> yeah hold on why is this not up okay 17 okay so she looks at you and then she looks at Stanley and then Rip Pharrell. She goes, oh, fine, whatever. Just put it on the counter. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. I put the money down. I grin. Get the hell out of here. And I will leave. Yeah. Thanks for nothing. Oh, wait. Before we leave, do you got a, uh, is there a good weapon shop around here you could recommend? Or are you too uh, pissed at me right now for the deal? I, I, don't, I don't like weapons, so I don't know. We're going Maybe to the can... foundry, Nash. We'll be fine. All right, let's get out of here then. F you, and then I wave, and we leave. <laughs> so, so that shot <sighs> gets back to her. I really dislike this lady. I don't like her at all. <laughs> she sucks. Uh, you go back out into the the sunny day, um, and uh, yeah, the foundry is across the street from the from the shop. Did you want to go in there, John? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Is your sword right, in so there? Where's your sword? That, that's where it, well, it is. Oh. isn't quite across the street. It's down the road a bit, but you guys make your way past the bakery and the apothecary. And Once we're right. out of eyesight, I will reach in and hand Nash the cape. Here's your dumb cape. Ah, there you go. Now, truly, Nash Maggard of the Solar Mines can be back so to his normal self, sort of. What's the point of the coins, then? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Varel, when you're dealing with quality individuals, you pay coin for goods and services, but, well, I didn't much care for her and her attitude, and her customer service could use a little work, so I helped myself. Oh, so so you, you sort of uh, punished her for her lack of awareness in the meeting. That's right. To kids these days, they just don't seem to care about customer service. Hmm. Hmm. See, uh, you have this conversation as you make your way down the road and walk into the foundry, which is a large wooden door that you gotta force open a bit. And you see the gentleman that you saw in there yesterday, and he's behind his counter, bring, bring, hammering uh, molten metal. <laughs> Sounds like he's rocking out. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's you. Good morning. And he's. he's Sounds like he hears something and he gets back. Bing! Bing! I pull out the megaphone. Good morning! <laughs> okay. I'm um, sorry, I'm just looking for my... I'm buying time while I'm looking for my notes. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe this is one I didn't have notes for? I Good morning, remember. it's me, Stanley Billings. Oh. Or as you called me, Stanley Billings. <laughs> Do you have your thing out? He, look, he turns around, looks up, and he's like, Huh? Are you again? Stanley. He looks at and he goes, Whoa! shit. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. And then he looks, he looks towards that. He goes, Ah! Hey, you come, doctor? Is you okay? Oh, We're fine. We're just here to pick up the order I placed yesterday. I forgot about this guy. What, 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 what order? I gave you a blade and a hilt to combine together. Uh, what's your name? Stanley Billings. 
Mm, he looks through his paper again. He's got just one sheet of paper with scrawls and marks on it. He's like, no, 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 Stanley Willings, no Stanley Billing here. <laughs> ah, the, the customer service is low. Uh, do we loot now? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your sheet. I'll point at my name. Uh, okay, shows his sheet. Do I see my name anywhere on there? Uh, you see, uh, still, uh, still will. And that is the closest thing to the spelling of your name. Maybe this one. And also, you notice the letter. Like some of the letters are written, you know, like all of the words are poorly written. As if this guy's spelling is not great. So, like, you know, cat would be spelled with a K and like an A and a T rather than a C A T. That kind of thing. So, right. yeah. Um, and you and guy with sword came in yesterday. That's right. Oh, hmm. You know, I even get that work done, but it's gonna cost you extra. It's hard to work on. Fifty gold. Jeez. Fifty gold. Did you complete the work? You said it'd be done this morning. And so he gets. Uh, he go. He reaches into a shelf behind his workbench as he turns around. He pulls out the blade now attached to the hilt that you had on your previous rapier, and he tosses it unceremoniously on the counter. He like points at it. Goes fifty gold. It was hard to work, very difficult to melt down. Gave me a big headache. That was hardly the deal. Just because it's more difficult doesn't mean that our deal has changed. 50 go! Then the deal, that's the deal. I will give you 20 gold. You pay for my hours of work. Took me more hours than it should have. 50 go! We had an agreement. Should I go get the sheriff and see what he thinks about he you? He takes the sword and he's like, I guess you don't want your sword then. Have a nice day. He gets back to work. Fine. I will pay you 50 gold. This is horse shit. All right. And he puts his hand out and motions for you to put the 50 gold on the table. I pay him 50 gold. Why are you giving him that? All right. Then he takes the sword and he, he tosses it on the table unceremoniously. But I think considering you have been a complete asshole, <laughs> you should throw in a free dagger as well. doesn't have to be nice. Just something for poking. What? Pull out the megaphone. I said you're being an asshole. <laughs> Get the hell out of my shop! Nothing free here! Not a charity! Yes, I've already paid you, you more than you deserve. Man, man. Roll for initiative. I'm considering it. <laughs> <laughs> we need a dagger. What overpriced charge are you going to give us for that? Um, two gold. He tosses this like, it's like a this pencil shaped little sticker. Just throws it on the thing. Like, Cut's good. Cut's good. You like it. Is this gonna cost me eighty gold tomorrow for no particular reason? Take it now. Two gold. Take it. Fine. Okay. So you now remove two gold and you add a, a pencil dagger to your. I uh, give it straight to Nash. Okay. There you go, Nash. You got a. Thank dagger. you. Bling. A <laughs> pencil dagger. Yeah, I got a pencil dagger. <laughs> How should I describe that in here? I can't. It won't let me. Just put dagger in there, but All make right. a note that it's a pencil dagger. All right. And items. All right. Okay. Oh, my stuff's still in here. It shouldn't be in here. So um, you can add to your inventory, Stanley. And because you spent some time already with the metal, we'll count that as time spent examining and studying the item. Um, now that it has a hilt on it, you have yourself, uh, what was it called again? Just one second. Dude. Sorry, I'm just I'm looking for this is the floating uh, weird dan uh, dancing rapier. Oh, ooh. ooh, dude, some loot. That's the loot he got from his adventure underground that he finally put a, a hilt on. Yeah, yeah. So have you have you found the weapon? Uh, D and D Beyond is taking its time, but I will add it as soon as I can. But I okay. won't hold this up any longer. Slow, All right, so uh, you guys exit the foundry, having. Assuming uh, the work's done there and you want to leave this guy's presence as soon as possible. Yeah. And begin to make your way back down Heaven Street to go see Hope. 
who's been wa- who's waiting very patiently to participate again in the show. And um, as you walk by the down uh, the middle area where the Buxom Confederate is, and the Sapphire uh, Nash, you you know having a little bad feelings about this place. You do see the jeweler again with bruises on his face, leaning up on his second floor, staring down at you. All right, I nudge Stanley and go, "That's the guy." That's the guy. That's the guy you picked a fight with? Yeah. Yeah. I look up to him. I give him a friendly nod. He's not the he one that you, beat me, though. Gives you a nod back. Don't Keep nod. Walking. Don't nod yeah. at him. He's a... And you, he's you got see, all actually, my... <laughs> you, you, you scan around while you're doing this, and you do see the guy, Donk. Uh, he's a big ogre. And he's carrying, like, six crates of beer into the saloon, and you sort of see him as well, sort of working, bringing these crates of stuff... Right. into the saloon I go that's the left the- hand side you also do see Celibus who's also hanging out on the front of his his establishment and he appears to be counting money in his hands not paying attention to you but he's also there all right all right I need to see hope before I can talk to him so I'm gonna keep going all right you guys keep walking down the road by wild tongues and boom bottoms and the seamstress's house where clothes are available um, and <laughs> and you walk all the way down to Hope's garage, and you sort of see the garage open. You see Hope there with like this like this big cloth spread out, and there's all these pieces. There's like um, you know, the the, the pistons are, are are out, and there's all these bolts and and metal pieces, and they're all sort of splayed out, very organized and methodically. And you're sitting there, Hope, cleaning the oil off of one of the pistons as uh, your your friends sort of walk up into the parking lot. Of Owens. Oh, well, hello. Welcome to the garage. Hi, Hope. Uh, sorry to intrude while you're working, but uh, time is of the essence, and I needed to get a little bit of information. Uh, we ran into Mr. Stump this morning, or at mm-hmm. least I did, and he said that he gave you a task. Yes. Yes, he did. Uh, find the deed to the copper mine. All right. Was there anything more he said? Just there's a deed to a, a copper mine of some did sort. You, did you? Um, sorry. Did you just need a reminder, or is it more that? Oh, just right, I'm, just, you know. I'm just holding. I'm trying to word this correctly. Cool. Um. Yes. A uh, deed has gone missing, and it seems that this lady named Catherine Speckles showed up in town one day got the deed, and then left. But there's a suspicion that uh, a gentleman named the jeweler is in on it. That's the guy. All right, and so he wants us... He wants the deed primarily is what he's looking for. We get the deed, we get the slaves, and us till is the next. That's a pretty good deal overall I hate to help Mr. Stump but honestly that's the fastest way to get what we want that's what it sounds like it's the only thing I've heard so far and the garage hasn't really brought up anything but I'm keeping my ears open hmm alright well I mean tonight I was planning on going to the Sapphire to drink there kind of make my rounds through the bars well, we already do have a friend who's acquainted, isn't that right, Nash? Mm. Wait, g- Nash, is that who you fought last night? Uh, you said fought, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought I heard something else. <laughs> you can hear your part if you want. I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's the guy. Um, him and the big guy. I forgot to mention the... Or did I tell you about the big guy? He's a huge guy. You mentioned big monster, but why did you fight him? What? The monster showed up and finished me. I didn't know he was there. I but was... why did you fight the jeweler? Because he's a dick, and I was pissed, and I wanted to fight him. So I fought him, and it should have been a fair fight. Man to man, he even made me put my stuff down. He put his weapons down. It was supposed to be a one-on-one fight. I may have used magic. I'm not saying I didn't. But he also used some kind of weird fist weapons that I don't think were fair. Now, Nash, was that before or after you used your... You may or may not have used your magic. Uh, 
I think is maybe after. But the point is, the, the p- part of the deal was it's still one on one, and this big guy behind me, he didn't, he wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> Sounds like magic might not have been part of the deal either. But if you guys, if and you, I'm glad you're alive. If you guys are telling me that this jeweler <clears throat> is part of the, the who we need to find and talk to. I'm all ears. Let's go. Now I have a team. It's not just me. I want revenge on this bastard. Well, it sounds like we just need the deed. We may not even need to run into the jeweler. He's just our first lead primarily. Now, does Mr. Stump know for sure that the jeweler had the deed? No, it's just the main suspicion he has. Hmm. All right. Well, I wouldn't mind more information. How much longer are you going to be here, Hope? Has uh, Owen said? No, Owen's, uh, he's doing his own thing a little bit farther down the garage, and he's peered over to see what you're doing, curiously. Oh, oh Owen, I've... these are my friends uh, who fought with me in the rusty cage. Nash, right, you so... met before. Mm-hmm. So your, your experience with Owen is that he's kind of a quiet guy, a few words sort of dude, doesn't, doesn't say too much. So you haven't learned too much about him other than, you know, he just talks about what needs to get done. And after that, not much in the way of words. So he just looks over at your friends and nods, but keeps his distance. And then uh, what time does the garage close? Well, I mean, you know, when the sun goes down, I'm always in here poking around. But if you've got stuff you need to do, you know, we've, we've gotten a lot done so far. I wouldn't mind getting that engine that you're working on finished. Let's or... finish it. As soon as the engine's done. All right, well, maybe we'll head on over to the Buxom Confederate and we can all meet up there and maybe get a bit more information. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so perfect. So let's say you wrap up another two hours. So it's getting to be late afternoon in the day. The three of you head on back over to the Buxom Confederate. Are you doing anything crazy, or are you just sitting there having a drink? At the Buxom uh, Confederate? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to wait. Can we say we wait there and move ahead in time, or does anyone have anything they really need I to just, get done? I'm, I'm sitting and drinking. I'm fine sitting and drinking. I think I would probably seek out Mr. Stump as soon as I got there. I would get the party here to explain what a deed is, and if we're going to rob the foundry. All right, so the three, so then we have some stuff to do. So the three of you head to the Buxom Confederate, and um, uh, <laughs> you sit down at the bar, order drinks, and you can now have a discussion. All right. I'm just brooding. I'm not talking. I'm just irritated because I'm, I'm wearing these shitty clothes I don't like. This cape looks silly on top of this work shirt. You were really insistent <laughs> on the cape. cape. I know, but yeah. I, I got to have something. Like, I feel like, I feel impotent. It's bad enough I don't have a wiener. Now I don't have my cape, my proper staff. I need that staff. Like, I'm missing that staff like a family member. That's what's going on in his head. Mm. He wants his stuff back. He f- I feel less than I was. Well, you have no idea who took it? I think it was the big guy. I can't take him on my own. He's taller than Varel. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> the, the beast the yeah. beast you spoke of yeah he's bigger oh than... uh, he is an impressive specimen then he's bigger than you no, hmm. no tail though he's human as best I can tell I don't know actually could be some gi- half giant I don't know what he is interesting there might be some uh, uh, beast den in town that we could go acquire the gatherings at perhaps he's kept them as a trophy on his cave wall have you considered just going over there and asking if they have your stuff? Well, um, no. That's weird. <laughs> if I do, you're going with me because I can't do it on my own. They already took me down. I mean, you told me that you were taking it off for the fight. Maybe it's just sitting there in a nice pile for you to come back and collect. I hadn't thought of that. That'd be a real pisser if it was there. I'm still keeping these clothes, though. Fine. Do you want? Would it make you feel better if we went and checked? Kinda. 
<laughs> right? I guess we're turning around and going over to the sapphire. Well, do you want? You're gonna be heading over there anyways with uh, hope later. Do you want to wait till? We'll wait till hope. If we know that, we'll yeah. wait for hope. Yeah. We'll wait for yeah. hope on that one. Yeah, I'd rather I mean, have the full got, team. She's the only responsible one out of the four of you. <laughs> Does it work? Can't just screw around all day yeah. <laughs> going shopping. Hey, we got <laughs> stuff done. It's more right. Than thought, but uh, okay. yeah. All right, so you did want to go talk to Celibus, though. Do you want to call him over, or...? Uh, I would go seek him out. Okay. Separate uh, from my companions. <laughs> All right. Uh, which is... He's not anywhere visible right now, so you'd probably have to ask uh, one of the people working. Sure. Who's uh, who's at the bar currently? It's Eric. Oh, I remember Eric. Who's... Yeah. Yeah. He does a lot of services for Celibus. He's pretty help, reliable. Helper guy. Eric, is uh, Celibus around? Uh, I have not seen him in a little while, but I can go put the word out for him. I'd appreciate that. I didn't have the chance to fully speak with him this morning, and we have more business to conduct. Okay. So you you let him know, and he heads to the back room, and then he comes back out, and Celibus doesn't show up. You wait, give it about 10 minutes, and you're still waiting. So it's just the three of us at the bar, just chilling? Yeah. Eventually, the door opens up, and Celibus does come out. Wait, what happened to Bok Bok? I think he's with you guys. Yeah, he's oh, he was here the whole time? I can't, you know, if you want to interact with him, just... I'm just making sure he's a bit of a chaotic element. I just don't know where he is, and he's sure. a good thing to keep an eye on. He's, he's, he's hanging out with you, being... You know, um, sneaky, I guess. You know, right. okay. not drawing attention to himself. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he, uh, Celibus appears in the doorway and motions for you, John, to, to go into his office. All right, I head on over there. Okay, and uh, so you enter into his office and he says, All right, Stanley, what can I do for you today? Well, I'm assuming this is a safer place to talk than where we were speaking earlier. We can speak frankly here. Sure. Uh, what can I help you? Well, we spoke to Hope, and she said you were tasking us with finding a deed. Is that correct? Is that what you're wanting uh, from us? Well, I told her what the parameters are of what I wanted. Yeah. And if we get you this deed, you're going to free all the slaves from Dust Hill. Let's be clear. I want you to find this deed on the jeweler. And I want the jeweler tried and killed. He's what? got it. I know he does. I have heard the whispers. I know he's got it. So find it. What you need to do is earn his trust so that he'll tell you what he's done with it and what he knows about Catherine Speckles. And then, and only then, report it to the sheriff and to me, and we'll have the law come down on him like holy hell. Then he'll be humiliated, and I will have exclusive control on entertainments in Slave Town. So, at the end of the day, your ultimate goal is the elimination of the jeweler. Yeah, uh, the humiliation, and uh, it's important he's humiliated. I understand. Now, hearing this from Hope, her focus was mostly on the deed itself less so on the other particulars and I think it's because Hope's a she's a good girl, an innocent girl and you know, she's going to do what you asked as far as finding the deed I'm here telling you that I will make sure that it is the jeweler who has it, regardless of where we find it Right, okay well if she had a reason to tell you something different, I'd trust her kind of talking patronizing about her I don't be mean careful to. what you say about hope around me all right what I'm saying is we, menacing at you. we have similar goals and I will get it done the way you want but right. I have a favor to ask in return oh you haven't asked me for many favors I'm looking forward to hearing this next one well it's not uncommon for when you're on a job to get 
partial payment up front to help with the situation and the rest of the payment afterwards. I would like Talia released <laughs> up front. You are insistent. You had a good time last night, huh? It's not happening. Well, you're asking an awful lot. Partial almost. payment? I've been trying to get that jeweler out of my, from under my fingernails for a decade now. I ain't partial paying anything. You That's... got you won over on my good graces last night with me, um, you know, uh, acquiescing to your request, something I'd never do. And the, and the reason I don't do that is, look, you're in here asking for more. Pretty soon, you're going to want me to bend over this table so you can give me a good working. <laughs> Very well. I'm disappointed. Well, I don't give a shit if you're disappointed. <laughs> I leave. All right. <laughs> Go back to the bar. It seems like you didn't receive good customer service. <laughs> <laughs> been a day for that, Vorel. It's been a day for that. <laughs> Do we steal the glasses, then? Let's play the game right there. <laughs> we, uh... We remain unaligned. I'm more easy. inclined than ever to see this town burn. Oh, good. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. So you guys are having a chat. Uh, you guys are drinking your drinks. It's quiet. It's awkward. Nash isn't saying anything. <laughs> Um, John is stewing in it right now, and Varel is just contemplating the nature of gold and customer service while Bok Bok um, sits quietly sort of next to him, actually falls asleep at the, at the table. Eventually, I uh, hope having been done with your day, you make your way down Heaven Street and into the Buxom Confederate. You see the four dejected, well, three dejected looking men and Varel, who looks positively mentally engaged with the world um <laughs> sitting at a table he's just like mm -hmm, so you mm -hmm. look for bro <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. it's like he's talking with nobody but there and uh yeah you enter into the bar well are we ready for what the sapphire we've got to try all the bars in town after all find out who has the best drinks no sure yes we'll rob them as well <laughs> rob them? Why would we rob them for us? Yes, we have had an excellent day full of shopping, and I have learned many customs. Oh. Well, that's fantastic. I'm I'm glad Stanley and Nash taught you so much. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> you say I, that? So you're wearing the evidence, friend. <laughs> Nice clothes, Nash, by the way. Yeah, he looks he, he looks actually dressed like a normal person and it's a it's a shocking thing to see. Except for well, the cape. Except for the cape. Yeah, the cape's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still it's more dressed than usual, which is kinda cool. Um so the uh you guys make your way across the street then, to, over to the sapphire. Yeah. Okay, and as you do, um you exit out into the main square, you see that it's not something that's not typical, uh, but you'll see the jeweler on the second floor. See nobody as you walk up and push your way into the sapphire. The door is open, and you see it's actually kind of full. And the clientele in the sapphire is like of a look like they don't look like they have as much money. They look like miners and Toyota host warriors, and 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 the, and the tables are quite full. It's quite packed in there. Um, triggers at the bar, sort of looking surly, pouring drinks. Uh, you see the, the the big guy that punched you out in the back, the, the donk, and there's this doorway heading into the back area. The wood paneling here is very plain. It's just wood, and there's a set of stairs leading up to the second floor. Uh, you also see, um, reading uh, reading a, what looks to be like a, a parchment paper, sitting is the jeweler, all with you know his battle scars from last night, and with these glasses, he's reading a paper and drinking a mead. This is the vision you walk in, and now behind the bar, like, along the walls, you do see various, like, trophies, like like um, carcasses from various hunts and things like that. It's all, it's, it's got kind of, like, definitely a legion feel to it, and, and up on the walls, there's um, 
you know, the carcass of a great, uh, great reptile. The, you're not quite sure what kind of reptile, but up there is bones. And also now on the wall, you see a cape and a staff pinned up, already placked up and pinned up on the wall with a little gold plate underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see your staff and your... Wait, what does the gold plate say? I'll walk up and read it. Now, it's a little too far away to see anything, but as you walk into the door, the jeweler, he looks up with his glasses and takes a look, and he's like, oh, it's you again. Ready for round two, Nash. Or he doesn't know your name. Ready for round two, you little son of a bitch. <laughs> I'll look you, back at Nash. You got my shit on the wall. It's my shit now. It's a oh. good display. Like, oh. come, come have, come have a drink. <laughs> Come, come, come sit to the bar. Trigger, get my friends a drink. And thank you, lizard man. Get my friend, get my new friends some drinks. Trigger pours out some drinks for each of you. These all yours work? Uh, mine or my buddy here, Trigger's. We like to go out and hunt things. It's an excellent We like to steal things from still breathing bodies, too. I didn't Standing steal anything. Right. Yes, you got your ass beat. It was an excellent steal, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, I didn't. I didn't steal anything. This this guy over here w wanted to pick a fight with me, and we said, "Hey, it'd be fair, man to man." And then all of a sudden, he's shooting acid in my face. Yeah, that does sound like him. <laughs> all right, look, I admit to the, the acid thing, but doesn't mean you can take my stuff. That wasn't part of the fight. I mean, it's mine now. Why would I give it back? You brought it in here. You put it down and. Abandoned it. As far as I'm concerned, it's uh, Maritimer's Law. You ever heard of that? It's, you cheated. You put the juggernaut guy behind me, and I had no choice. What was Sand I supposed to? Maritimers, that is. <laughs> yeah, there ain't no way. Just keep, just keep it in canon. There's no water <laughs> here. Um, I need those back. You can give them to me nicely. Or there's going to be shit to pray in here. Nash, <laughs> now hold on before you go picking more fights. My goodness, he cannot open his mouth without starting some form of problem. <laughs> uh, I apologize for uh, You don't got to apologize for him. I appreciate a tough son of a bitch. Look at this guy. It looks like he's been he ro rolled down the hill and rolled back up and rolled down the hill again. And he's still, first thing he wants to do is fight. I like I like this guy. That's not wrong. I don't, um, I don't care if he likes me. I don't like him. I don't like this place, and I don't like my shit on his wall. So you all can well, play look, nice. You all can be friends. You can all do that all you want. I'm glad but, you guys finally decided to come here instead of over in that shithole of Bucks and Confederates. It's good to see you guys. I know who you are. What can I do for you? Well, I, my name is Stanley Billings. Mm. Pleased to meet you. Sure. Uh, you can call me Bertrand. Bertrand Molg. Bertrand Molg. Good to have a, a official name. Everywhere else, they seem to just call you the jeweler. Well, they call me the jeweler because I'm smart. I know my oh, jewels. You don't deal with James? Well, I do. Fancy. I thought this was going to be like a jewelry shop, to be honest. Bye. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't do that fancy stuff here. I'm called the jeweler because I, I only do jobs of high value, and I can do uh, things very efficiently and very quietly. I respect my client base, but, uh, you know, these are auspicious times tough times for me. I gotta be careful who I keep close. Now, I've been watching you guys going in and out of the Buxom Confederate. Now, I can only imagine that Celibus has been whispering some pretty nice things to you guys. Oh, he does try to be a charmer, that one. Mm-hmm. Now, tell me you haven't gotten in bed with him. <laughs> <coughs> well, hmm? Figur okay. Figuratively <laughs> or literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I slept on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you better be careful of anything that man offers you because you're going to end up paying 10 times whatever it costs if 
he even delivers on what he promises. Well, that is the situation. Uh, I don't know how much you've heard about us. Um, I heard you beat the Koromu Kishi in the Rusty Cage, which has never happened, by the way. And I, I don't know if you've stopped to think about how, you know, what, what the consequences of that really are. Well, so far it's brought us a lot of attention we don't necessarily want. Right. Well, people don't win in the Rusty Cage. And you're a problem. And it may not seem that way right now, but you're a very big problem here. And who would be considering us a problem? Oh, you know, the those crazy those crazy Toyota guys. Those the, the Karomo Kishi, the magistrates. They don't want people that are to be shown to be tougher than them. They hold people down by with their thumb. Now we got some heroes here who prove themselves innocent in in, in trial. Then you we'll guys, you guys are not long. You fools are not long for this earth. Or we just beat their trainees again, and all the higher ups will kill them. It's a rather easy affair. Yeah, well, you. This is just but a fraction of the principal's might. You'd do best to probably get the hell out of town as soon as possible. That's Thank your lucky stars, you're alive. That's ultimately our goal. We have no real desire to be staying here. The problem is we come from a place called Dust Hill. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but apparently uh, word about it has gotten around. I have heard about it, actually. Well, we would like nothing better than to just head back home. The only problem is, is that there are 24 or so of our people currently held in chains here that we have no intention of leaving without. Yeah, he sort of draws you close and he says, Dust Hill's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You don't know, do you? Oh, shit. That place, you really don't know. Spit it out. Wow. Trigger, he don't know. And Trigger just looks back and says, imagine that, brother. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> As Dust Hill's days are numbered, friends. They have been from the beginning. Uh, 365 of them. A year. No. No. What I mean is that they're, they're coming for the rest of them. Dust Hill has been sold up and down the river. I already bought. It's just a matter of time. If you're looking to rescue some slaves here, well, you'd be bringing them back just to get taken again. The days of Dust Hill being a hidden sanctuary for for the you know some I'm sure fine people. Those days are numbered. Those days are numbered when that skinny guy and that little gnome walked into town. Skinny guy and little gnome. I mean, do you know who that might be? Oh, dear. <laughs> it seems the hillmaster and his little friend sold off the town. Did the gnome by any chance, did you get to see him? I mean, I heard reports from my spies who saw him. Did he look like this? And I rummage in the bag for, for a soft head drawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he wasn't uh, shirtless and out hunting in the wild. Uh, but, you know, I was told he's got that hair. And it looks, looks like it might be him. He said his name was... Um, the Hillmaster, you're right. And, and the name was like Hard Hat or something like that. For the gnome. Well, Varel, it looks like you're correct. It looks like he sold out his own town. So so you know who those guys are, don't you? We do. So you can see that. And I'm just guessing here. You know, I hear things. And I can just guess anyways. I've got pretty good intuition about these things. You don't survive this long in this town without knowing a thing or two. That uh, maybe someone might have promised you some, some nice things about releasing some slaves. If only perhaps maybe you'd come for me. No, that's right. I mean, we... Mm -hmm. I have not received 
We've received plenty. <laughs> so wait, of hang on, st stop, uh, Varel. Did you know about this, or have you been excluded from the whole Hope and Stanley knowing what's I, going on? I, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> is it no? You genuinely don't know, or no? No, that's all been in the check. background. All I know is I'm after a copper deed, and no one's told me what a deed is. Okay, yet. so no deception <laughs> check necessary. You actually don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, neither there's Nash because yeah. I wasn't there earlier or there either. Yeah. That's not entirely true. We have been promised all manner of things in order to get our people back. Of course you have. Of course. There's nothing that man wouldn't like more than to see me hang. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's nothing I'd like more than to see that man hang. So, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe you could uh, do something to help me. But I can't promise you will release the slaves, but I promise you this. We'll save this town together. Save this town from what exactly? From the oil beards. Kick them principal guys out of town for good. That's the only way you win here. You don't win by saving your, your buddy slaves, bringing them back to Dust Hill. That place is doomed. But won't Principal City just come back to this place? It's far enough away. They make the effort because they breed good slaves out here. But if we if we if we get rid of that, I ain't got no love for slavery. I don't need that to turn a coin. And those places, uh, ever since the slave trade came in here and developed, uh, I've lost. Uh, I'll say I've lost some of my control over what I do best around here. So you know, maybe uh, we join forces. And I get you to help me. So, so you're saying take back this town. you're saying you you kick out the principles and in, and in return we get, we can yeah. we I can mean, release the these reason slaves. I'm talking to you is because you were strong enough to beat those Kuromokishi and to listen to this big green fucker talk here. He's <laughs> gonna kill them all. I want to be on his side. So what did you need us to do? Mm, well. One thing at a time, we do have to find out where this deed is. Don't we? You're referring to the gold mine deed. Yeah, that's right. Sullivan's probably sent you over, thinking I have it. And, and you don't. The truth is, I don't have it. It's got nothing to do with me. But it'll be a big start on getting control of it, because we have to get control. We can't let the oil beards get any more control over anything in this town so we're gonna get it and we're gonna stay in control of it now i got a man his name is timber mcclelland and uh he's he owes me some money and to pay me off he was supposed to go get me the deed now i haven't heard back from him in over a week i need you to find this man for me Timber McClund? Timber McClellan. McClellan. And I mean, where just was... called Timber. Mm. Where was he sent to obtain the deed? Well, my, my sense was that, uh, in fact, the oil beers had it. Now, all I know is that in the, since that time, old, one of Oil Beard's son, Mabruk Oil Beard, he turned up dead. And the deed's been missing ever since. And the word is that a woman came in and had the deed notarized and took it with her. So I guess what I'm saying is I sent him to go find Catherine Speckles. Wait, what do you know about Catherine Speckles? Uh, not much. I know she came into town from Principal City. She rented a room at Laddlebing's. I think she might even still have a room there. But no one can find her now. We don't know who she represents or why she's here. And no idea what she looks like. Uh, well, I saw her walk through the town square once or twice. Long brown hair, braided. Dresses like a, a fine woman from a higher caste. You know, like, like she's well off. But she didn't carry any bodyguards with her. And from what I hear, she had kind of a rough personality. I think we saw her. 
We did. In the did bar, you? In the bar. The the lady that kept looking at Varel, kind of sizing him up. Oh, boy, uh, a bullet belt. Bullet belt Bullet lady. belt? Yeah, bullet belt lady. Did she wear a bandolier of any kind? Uh, you're, no, I know who you're thinking of. That's a local celebrity, that one. With the, the bullet belt in red, that's a Acromonicar Jolt Elegos. Well, an impressive that's name. A, that's amazing. You, you guys, I, I know you guys are for sure from Dust Hill. You wouldn't have heard of her, but she's well known. Her and her dead man gang. It's a famous posse. Take your word for it. They've they've done a lot of they've done a lot of robberies up and down the dead wastes. Mm. And mm. now she's hung her hat here. People don't usually mess with her too much. You kind of want to stay out of her way. One more question, just to kind of help help us understand the way the town works, because we are still fairly new here. Mm -hmm. uh, I get the impression that there is almost two factions at work within this town. There's those who support the principal, which would be the Toyota host, the Koromokishi, uh, Mr. Stump over at the Buxom Confederate, Oil Beards, all of them. But I was under the impression that prior to the principal moving in, there were maybe some people who look at them a little less favorably, such as the sheriff. Uh, sure. Sounds like maybe yourself. Let me give you a bit of uh, explanation here. This used, place used to be called Pristine. And then Pristine, Trenchard Oilbeard came up and set up shop here, and we started mining the Black Mine together. We were in business together a long time. But then Trenchard got into slaves, and he was encouraged to get into slaves thanks to the pro its profitability and the principal's demand once we had they had started parlaying. Eventually, he took over uh, through his... He's a pretty smart guy with money, pretty crafty fellow. Trenchard took over the whole mine. He owns most of the levels in the mine. And he's supposed to own the new chopper mine, but... We're working on cake taking that. But it, the principal came in and kind of took control from Trenchard. So Trenchard still runs the concern, still makes his money, still has power, but really he kind of let the door open in for the devil. And now the devil's here, and that's the principal and the Karomo Kishi and the Toyota host, and they want to take everything from everyone. They won't stop with their buttery words until we're all slaves working for the principal. Now, if you want to talk about factions... I'm my own faction. I want to live a free life without any oppressors to make money, to kill who I want, to fuck who I want, and to do what I want. And that's not what I can do under the principal's regime. So we need to get rid of them. And there are people here at work that you don't know about that are working to undermine them. There's the Laborers Accord. There are the Liberators. There's all kinds of secret groups here. And we're trying to fight the good fight to, to get them out. So you best join up with us and not with Celibus because he's just he's just a little little shill for Oilbeard and for all the principal's men. Well, I would like nothing better than to see the slavers of this town driven out. I think most of us would agree with that to say the very least, correct? Yeah. What, Good. what, so what then, assurances do we have that you're not going to screw us any more than he will? Here's my assurance, you gnarly, you gnarly, gnarly little man. <laughs> tough, tough, gnarly little man. Yeah. He reaches up to the thing to grab the staff and the cape from behind the bar. Yeah. And he bent, he sort of bows with respect and gives you your items. Offers you your items. Oh. What's the catch? There's no catch. Except that you might die. As we all fighting back. I have one other thing I want to ask you. Right now, uh, Celibus Stump has a bit of leverage. There's somebody that means a good deal to me under his forceful employ. As long as she remains there, there is uh, always going to be some form of 
sway he will have over my decisions. Do you have any idea on how we might be able to get someone out of there? I mean, we could figure something out. Ain't that hard to kidnap a person. You ever kidnapped anybody? Not that I can remember. <laughs> All right, well, you find me this man, Timber. You find me that deed. I know people who can kidnap. We'll get it done. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, then we have a deal. <laughs> spits on his hand. I actually spit on my hand. Um, <laughs> puts, <laughs> Dedication. Guy is into it. Uh, and he holds his hand out to... Uh, he holds his hand out. Does anyone take it? I'll uh, take it. Yeah. John you should do it. First? Yeah, I'll spit first. Yeah. He can press to digitate that later. And he, he, just, he goes, <laughs> he spits it again, and he hands it out to you now. I'm reluctant. I look at, I sideways glance at, at Stanley, and then I kind of breathe. And then I put my hand out and I shake it. And he goes, Tua! spits again, hands it out to you, Hope. All right, I'll spit in my hand and shake it. He's like, say, oh, you're an actual hard worker. I see oil on your hands. Yeah, at the garage today. Randall's a good man. He is. Mm. And he spits his hand, Tua! offers it to you, Varel. Aren't we going to go drink at oil builds now? <laughs> and hear the other third side of the story where he says, you're all liars. All beer is not a drinking establishment, sir. Oh, well, then we will feast. <laughs> well, we have sand squid if you want some. You guys want a drink? What do you guys want to drink? But we have first. We have a deal. Oh, I guess we've all made deals. Bok Bok, you're making a deal, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shake. All right. Perfect. And then he, uh, he looks at you and he looks at me he's like, Oh, you got you got a goblin with you, eh? And he spits in his hand and holds it out for Bok Bok. Bok Bok takes it and smells the hand. Doesn't really shake it, he just smells it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> looks a little bit. Oh, foul. And 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 the jewelry just kind of laughs. He goes, you know, I got uh, I got something you might like, a little Bok Bok. He points to the back, and so there are some women back there, and they're clearly, you know, prostitutes. Uh, that work in the sapphire definitely not as nicely dressed and um and uh, he sort of calls over and he, and he what's her name he goes uh, gitart gitart come over here and another short she looks kind of human but you realize it's a goblin in a dress comes over and ah! like, <laughs> and buck buck whips back his thing he's like oh yeah <laughs> And they immediately start going at it right there in the middle of the bar. Uh, the dress comes up and they're like, ar, ar, and it's very angry and it's not really affected. And, and the jeweler sort of sort of slaps Bok Bok's head and he's like, take it back there, take it back there. We don't want that. that we don't want your dick out here. <laughs> <laughs> and then so they run out to Bok Bok and Guitar to run out to the back, uh, of the sort of back hallway where Donk is bodyguarding. And then Donk takes a look at you, Nash, and poof, spits on the ground. It's a kind gesture. Well, you know, it's, uh, I mean, you're paying for it, right? And three gold pieces. No. Oh, oh. Yeah, John. Yes. I mean, Stanley, he carries the money. No, I, I have my own. That's where the money came from earlier, Nash. I, <laughs> I gave you 20. <laughs> Coiny. When I do the three on the table, there we Perfect. Well, we've all shaken and we're all friends. So I'm looking forward to the change we can bring to Slave Town. I think we'll just have to leave it there for the time being. That's the yeah. end. The end, everybody. 30 minutes over our time. It's all right. I was going to ask him where my cash went, but I'll, we'll save that for another day. <laughs> he took all my winnings. And uh, as happy as I am to get the staff and the cloak back, I would like to and see Rest that. assured, listeners, there will be dungeons. Oh, yeah. There will yeah, dungeons. there will be dungeons. That's the name of the damn show. We have to have dungeons mm -hmm. at some point. Hey, we had to get a lay of the land. We had to get through the town. Yeah. Literally a lay of the land. Yeah. yeah there was. And Bok Bok found love, says the chat room. Yes, he did. Bok Bok 
keeping it fresh. Also, a lot of stamina, that Bok Bok. Last I checked on him, he was getting thrown in a room for vigorously masturbating, and now he's already making it with a lady. So That's pretty that's impressive. That's a idea, not mine. It was. You're right. Uh, assistant DM. Hey, uh, well done, everybody, and thank you all for being here and listening uh, once again to this episode. If uh, you're looking for anything to do with the show, it's all at there will, uh, therewillbedungeons.com. There will be dungeons on Twitter. And uh, on the site, you'll find a link to this T-shirt we're selling, and we've already moved a few. If you are interested in one, go check it out. See what you think. It's based on Bo's great representation of the Mouther that we used a couple episodes ago when we had guest stars on. It's my artistic take on that, and uh, people seem to like it. So go check it out. Therewillbedungeons.com. We'll be back next time for a brand new thing. Uh, the week after that, there is no show because I'm in Las Vegas. Uh, but we'll talk about that off air and let, make sure people are aware of the week we won't be here. But for the most part, you can expect to see us back. I think it's going to do it. Anybody else have anything before we go? No, great session again. Great Keep session, it everybody. Keep, Keep it, it fresh. fresh. Keep it fresh with <laughs> Bok Bok, everybody. And we'll see you next time on There Will Be Dungeons. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Yeah. Well done, everyone.